Hi, this is Sean from Ace Appliance in Toledo, Ohio. Welcome back to another in-home diagnostic video brought to you by Appliancevideo.com. Alright, uh, the complaint is that it's not cooling properly. Uh, so first thing I'll do, I'll open up the freezer here. We can look inside and along the back wall there's quite a bit of frost up where the evaporator is. Uh, we can hear the evaporator fan motor running right now. And uh, with that frost there, it's going to be a sign that the unit is no longer self-defrosting. Thus, it can no longer circulate the cold air between the two compartments and not cool properly. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take the racks out, uh, remove or uh, loosen the back panel. Okay, and then you see back here, we have uh, quite a bit of frost on the back. Uh, that's a blatant sign of a uh, defrosting issue. So, we're going to take the racks out, pull the back panel. Uh, or get it out of the way the best we can um, and then we'll go in there and uh, we can ohm out the bimetal and the, uh, the heater from there find out if uh, one of those are bad or not. And so I'm just going to go ahead and grab my racks get those out of the way and now we have our uh, some screws in there Go ahead and remove the light cover. Set that aside. I'm going to take the light bulb out because it's blocking the screw that I need to access. And now there's one screw there, and then we can remove the, the whole panel all together. So I'm going to take out that one Phillips screw. So now that that's out, we can raise up to clear the lower panel from the, that drip pan, and then we'll pull the whole panel out. All right, so I'm, so we got that out. Now we're just gonna move it. Now we can see our frozen evaporator. So from this point here, we can uh, actually ohm out the the bimetal or your defrost thermostat, defrost termination, whatever you like to call it, and the, uh, the heater. They all plug in up at the top, right up at where all the kind of the wires go in this general area here. There's like a little, uh, almost like a little board with all the terminals on it, and it kind of ties everything in there. So that's our testing point. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut the refrigerator off, because obviously we don't need the compressor to keep running and continue frosting at this point and then we can test. All right, so I'm gonna open it up. Let me get up to my controls here. Not sure which is one. Shut it off, just stop our airflow. I can close this door back up. And then now I can come over here and uh, test our components. Okay, so I'm gonna test out our components here. I have my uh, meter set to uh, ohms. I have it on the audible, so if there's a good circuit, I'll hear a, and if there's no circuit, I won't hear anything. So what I'm gonna do is just isolate the wires. I know the heater wire are these gray wires. So I'm gonna try to remove just one of the wires from our block, and then I'm gonna ohm out the heater at the two gray wires. I will let's hold this one here and then all right there's no continuity we know the heater is open so I can just plug this and I can do the same thing for our bimetal because it's here it's cold it should be closed and make a good circuit so I'm just going to track my wires 
find out where they're at. Remove one of them and then track my other one, the white one. And the bimetal is good. So what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna have to throw out the ice and then we'll replace the heater. Okay, so uh, right now we have to go ahead and thaw out the evaporator to be able to uh, replace the heater and also so that way it'll function properly once we replace the heater. So I'm going to use my heat gun. In order to make my life easier, I put the rack back in here. I make sure there's nothing plastic on the back side of the rack that my heat gun may melt. I'm then going to get my heat gun in position, turn it on, and that way I can just let it sit here so it'll thaw out. Now you'll want to make sure that you watch the heat gun so it doesn't turn. It's a plastic liner and it will melt it. Right, we, get, we have a majority of the ice melted right now, uh, so we're going to go ahead and start the repair. Uh, a lot of the rest of the stuff will either melt on its own right now, or we can just kind of gently remove with a screwdriver, making sure not to puncture the evaporator. So I'm going to start by removing this uh, rack out of the way. And what we're going to end up doing is there's a quarter inch screw here and here, here and here, and then disconnect the two wires for the heater, and we can remove the old wires. Go up, right. go to the upper heater. All right, so we got those screws out of the way. Now I'm going to go up to the top to what we'll call like the terminal block, disconnect the two heater wires, and then I can start to remove the heaters. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just remove my two wires. I'll have those loose. All right, uh, the bottom one is simple to remove. There's a lot of extra room. And then, uh, so we can get that one out of there no problem. Uh, it's the upper one that we kind of have to bend uh, a little frame a little bit to get some extra space. Getting it out is no problem because if you break it, who cares? Because we're putting in a new one. Getting the new one in can be a little bit more difficult. So now we have our heaters here. All right, so now I'm gonna gently try to use my screwdriver here and just some of the slushy stuff. It'll actually come out a little bit easier with my screwdriver than it will trying to melt it. So we're gonna see what we can clear out of here. Okay, uh, so we got almost all the ice out of there. Uh, but what's left in there now is just gonna melt on its own or when it goes into the self defrost cycle on its own. So uh, what we'll do now is we're gonna prepare a new heater to be installed and then we'll go ahead and install those. So here's our new heater assembly. Uh, in order to differentiate between which one's the bottom and the top, if you look at the two wires that come off, one is a lot longer than the other. So the longer one is gonna go on the bottom. That's how we know which one is the bottom and the top. So 
just going to grab our bottom heater, rest it into the bracket, and I'm going to take our two clips and put one on the heater. And then there's a little tab on the bracket that the clip just goes into. And then we're going to do the same thing to the other side. it onto the rubber part of the heater and go ahead and pull our clip into place like so. So now our bottom heater is installed. We're going to do the exact same thing for the top heater. So I'm going to take it and rest it into the bracket. Take our Coming. clamps and and there. So now we have both heaters in place. So now we have to go ahead and fit them in there. Um, like I said earlier, the most difficult one is that middle one because they got those little panels on the side. So we'll go ahead and get this installed. So I'm taking my middle heater and we're going to get it in there. However we can, like I said before, it's going to be kind of a tight fit. We do have to be a little bit more careful since it's, it's a new one and it's glass. But it's going to be a tight squeeze. All right, so we got it in there. So I'm going to take the two screws I took out earlier and I'm going to mount it in place. All right, so. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the lower heater. All right. So this one's the easy Got some ice in here I'm clearing out. This one's the easy one to do. So we're just going to... Yeah. All right, now we just have to tuck our wires. So that way we have room for our back panel. So the two on the side here just run right up the side, all the way up to the top where we're going to plug them in. So we got these up here. Now I'm just going to go ahead and plug them into a, our terminal block that we took off. Right. So I'm going to go and press the first one into place. second one. Now the terminals up here are different sizes for some reason, but uh, one's just going to go to each spot. So even if you were to do it backwards, you can't get it wrong because they're only going to fit in one spot. All right, so we got our wires here. Then I want to bend the uh, pieces of this panel that I bent out to make room for our heater, bend them back down in position. Then I'm going to grab my back panel and I'm going to fasten that into place. So we're going to go ahead and put our panel in. I'm just going to put it in position uh, back here. I'm going to have to raise it up quite a bit because I have to tuck it into the bottom of this little drip pan right here, which I'm doing right now, and then let it sit into place. Then I can come back and start putting in all of our screws. All right, so I'm going to start here at the top screw. Now I have the remaining screws along the side, but if you look, they don't line up with the bracket. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to use my flat headed screwdriver. I'm going to wedge it along the side and behind the, uh, there's a little gasket material on the side of our front panel. If I put it behind there, it'll be able to push that bracket over and I can get to the screw holes. All right, so I'm going to take my screwdriver, just start at the bottom so I can get underneath this rubber seal. Screw in. 
Now I'm probably going to move up to the top on the same side. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing. Just bring my screwdriver up, place it on the bracket. Let's see if I can find this thing. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Thank you for watching another quality in-home diagnostic video brought to you by appliancevideo.com.